Hello and welcome to this uh, special show on Rajya Sabha Television. I am Vishal Dahiya and here we bring you all the details of India's fight against COVID-19. Now, one very interesting aspect in this entire battle against the COVID pandemic has been the work which has been done by all sectors, be it the government agencies or the private companies as well. Wonderful work being done when both of them have come together, that is a public-private partnership in terms of innovation and in terms of indigenization as well. So today we're going to talk about PPP model for indigenous innovation. And for this, we have a, a very distinguished panel of guests. Let me first introduce the guest to you, beginning with Dr. Taslim Ray Said. He, uh, he's the CEO of uh, CCAMP. Uh, we also have with us uh, Dr. J.K. Sharma, that is Jitendra Sharma. He's the MD and CEO of AMTZ. And we're also joined by Dr. Alka Sharma, Scientist G, in the Department of Biotechnology. Welcome, all of you, to Rajasabha Television. Let me begin with you, Dr. Alka Sharma. And let's start by uh, trying to understand this model that's public-private partnership specific to indigenous innovation and also during this particular period, that is the COVID crisis, the pandemic period. Thank you, Vishal. It is my pleasure to be a part of this program. As you know, the Department of Biotechnology is promoting public-private partnership in the biotech sector for the past several years. One of the major steps in this initiative in this direction, the establishment of Biotechnology Industry Research Assistant Council, that is Biotech, as its public sector undertaking. As you see today, the major platform has been created for the past few years to promote indigenous innovation through public partnership are really helping us in dealing with the current pandemic. For example, launch of National Biopharma Mission, which is co-funded by World Bank and being implemented by BIREC. Similarly, NCP program, that is India Secret Coalition for Epidemic Awareness Initiative, and also DBT, AMTZ, uh, Command Consortium at Vishakha Patna under the Make in India initiative of our government. So this clearly shows the foresightedness of our government. We look at this as an opportunity where platforms which have been created are not being utilized for development of diagnostics, therapeutics, vaccine, repurposing of drugs by the academia, startup, and industry to create solutions for COVID-19. So in the current scenario, we also have taken a uh, number of initiatives under the leadership of our secretary, Dr. Enu Saru, and we implemented a multi-pronged strategy and action plan focusing on immediate response as well as for long-term preparedness. So as per the strategy, one of the major initiatives which we have taken, we have established National Biomedical Resource Indigenization Consortia, that is NBRIC. Pilot NBRIC has been launched recently. And the overall aim of this NBRIC is more innovative, indigenous product development in the country. Similar also facilitating upscaling private partnership, I lab for testing and other products like PP, diagnostic kits, and as a ask of the examples partnership. So I lab has been recently launched by our honorable minister Dr. Harsudanji on 18th June, and this is a well-equipped lab and which can cater the need for uh, COVID testing in the rural settings in our country. And we have here Tain Shamadida, who is going to give us more details about I lab and other okay. initiatives. Okay, okay. So I would like to just say that through these efforts, we are in the process of achieving self-sustainability leading to Okay, definitely. Self-sustainability or self-reliance is the main theme and focus here. And one example given there by Dr. Alka Sharma as far as iLab is concerned. But the NBRIC consortium, which uh, you spoke about, Dr. Alka, let me bring in, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Taslim here from CCAM. Uh, Dr. Taslim, how does this consortium work as in uh, the, the NBRIC consortium, which, uh, you know, has been set up uh, under... Uh, your uh, organization out there, and, and what kind of companies are involved? What kind of assistance do, do they get uh, 
what's the kind of uh, you know uh, the the combination the ppp mode uh, which is uh, followed here Absolutely. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and I'm I'm glad that you know uh, such an important initiative constituted by Department of Biotechnology being discussed. Because uh, just to give you a, a possibly a couple of minutes context to the larger thing, we realized that uh, as a nation, uh, healthcare system and public health system, we were possibly not fully equipped to take care of. You know the challenge. Take on the challenge of the healthcare that we have. It, we found that many of the healthcare uh, interventions that we use was largely dependent on overseas import. You know, and that was a huge thing that we realized. And during this time, I think it was conscious very well of the solution with Kiran Majumdar, Shah Bayakon, and many others. Uh, at, and CCAM, uh, you know, including myself, it was a very important aspect. And can we now put not only a, a immediate response to this crisis, but a long-term perspective on how do we build capacity and capabilities for building such healthcare innovations, biomedical resources, and so on in India, so that not only for now, but in the future, we actually have resources to respond to such crisis, resources to grow forward, resources to build a cutting edge innovation ecosystem. And that's where the concept of Enbrick came forward as Dr. Sharma mentioned, National Biomedical Resource Indigenization Consortium. Now, in the consortium, uh, DBT comes in as a, actually a constitutional partner, as a government partner to build it with industry coming in, both large MSME and startups coming into together to play their role. And CCAM is going to be the host. All the partners which are industrial bodies like CII and ABLE. And of course, if the entire uh, convergence happens through the governance, uh, which actually leads to the DBT. Now, what happens, I'll bring it and come back to you. What happens is that if this as a platform, this as a consortium, identifies national needs. Let's say for now, if COVID-19 testing is a national need, identifies it and saying that if this is the national need, how do we bring all stakeholders together and ensure that we can respond as one, not as separate ecosystem, as one ecosystem to that. And it has been phenomenal the way we have come together. I'm happy to share the outcomes. But this consortium model was actually crucial to come at this time rather than attempting things separately, coming together and converging these attempts have been phenomenally impactful. So I'm glad that this has happened, and Enbrig continues to play that part, not only for testing, but going so, okay. forward okay. potentially for serological testing, vaccine, and so on during this crisis. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Dr. Salim, one more question here is that how many companies are associated with this consortium, and then uh, you know what kind of products are we looking at specifically? Absolutely. So, so what we have done here is that we have actually done. Uh, a kind of a sequential model in terms of the prioritizing the need. As you know, the current need of the nation is testing, rapid diagnostic testing, as you call it. And 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 this is exactly what is very, very important. So we have prioritized that. And within that, we have around 40 companies already being a part of it. Some companies are kit manufacturers. Some companies are more important, the, the reagent manufacturers, which are the building blocks for the kits. So coming them together, aligning the need and supply within this two, and then helping the ones which are building that to get the regulatory approval and so on is the aspect. Yesterday, or rather this morning, we have now gone to the next uh, aspect of the, the, the uh, model, that is for the serological. Now we are actually bringing serological uh, testing companies to on the board, and that will be another cohort. So we are building one national lead by one national lead, different cohorts, and helping each cohort to come together and work with government to actually respond to the national needs. Okay, and that's that's a wonderful idea. Looking at you know one particular segment uh, uh, and and uh, taking them one by one, ensuring that the entire infrastructure in terms of building capacity and capability. Let's bring in Dr. Jitendra Sharma now. He is the MD and CEO of AMTZ. Uh, Dr. Sharma, your views on how this entire PPP model for indigenous innovation in biomedical resources work? Uh, 
traditionally, if you look at PPP, any public-private partnerships, every 10 years, India has given a new model to the world. The model of 1995-2000 World Bank Assistance PPP for National Highway was that the government will ask private investor to build highways mm -hmm. and earn from the toll fees. That's PPP. Because the amount of money required to build national highways was not enough at that point of time. Then in the year 2010-2015, Another kind of PPP emerged in India, which is, for example, the 108 ambulance service, where the government buys the ambulance, but it's a private partner who operates it because private partners have a higher efficiency of operation, higher accuracy of operation than what government would have if government were to operate. That's another kind of PPP. That's a service PPP. What DBT has now brought and through DBT, what India has now given to the world is the science PPP. Okay. Another model of PPP, which is conducive for technological growth, where we are not building roads or operating an ambulance, where we are building science. And how does that happen? In this, it's just the opposite. It is the government which builds the infrastructure required for science, and it is the private sector who uses it for production. So if you see how different we are today, even within the PPP domain, it is very non-traditional and very futuristic. Now, in this third model of PPP, where the government is investing on science and technological infrastructure, allowing private sector to actually milk it, therefore improve their scale-up capabilities of production, and therefore benefiting India, is very different than government asking a private partner to dump money on building a highway. Mm -hmm. I wanted to bring this to you or uh, to the to the notice of viewers because mm -hmm. this whole section is on PPP and it is very important to understand that within PPPs how PPP in science is so different from PPP in something like highways. Okay. When we when we come to this PPP in science, we have three parts. The part one is what AMTZ uh, uh, is, is known for. We are world's only manufacturing city for medical equipment. We manufacture right from a, a, a thermal scanner uh, to a personal protective equipment, to a ventilator, to a CT scan tube, to a dialysis machine, to a ventilator, to an MRI. We manufacture everything. So in this manufacturing capability that exists in AMTZ, if a bunch of manufacturers were to emerge as national suppliers, they need to change their production capacities by 20 or 30 times. For okay. that, they need plant and machinery. That's where DBT AMTZ Command Consortium comes to the rescue. Mm -hmm. Machines are funded for under the consortium for them to scale up their manufacturing. The machine remains the property of AMTZ, which is a public enterprise. The manufacturer does not have the financial burden to invest on plant and machinery. Okay. Yet they can install those machines in their factories as part of the support and scale up their manufacturing to meet national demand. Okay. And and and, and what, what has been the response, uh, Doctor? Uh, uh, you know, uh, Jitendra, uh, on. From the industry, you know, from the from those who are involved with you in in, in this particular format, uh, how has they responded to it? What's their experience? The experience is simply awesome because no manufacturer today, uh, in in an economic slowdown for reasons out of everyone's control, uh, would like to invest twenty or thirty or fifty crore on plant and machinery and take a risk of what would happen to it post the epidemic. But when a support system is given to them through manufacturing infrastructure keeping in mind the product diversification that can happen in future, that mm -hmm. risk goes away. And there I would like to you know, cite the example of what Dr. Alka Sharmaji mentioned on iLab. This iLab, which was built in eight days, today is capable of testing COVID because it has a BSL-2 cabinet, biosafety cabinet, BSL-2 lab, RT-PCR, ELISA, and all other machines that are required for COVID. But after COVID is over, the same iLab can be used for tuberculosis, 
which is also a national priority as mr sleepersley was saying okay okay it can also be used for hiv so if i were to summarize what dbt amtz command consortium is which mm -hmm. is a very unique model of ppp it has three parts part one is providing manufacturing infrastructure for critical machines like mm -hmm. ventilators we are also producing uh, 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 heading towards a production of 15000 ventilators about 50 lakh rt pcr kits uh, we already produce about 4000 personal protective gowns per day and about 50000 n95 masks per day mm -hmm. the ir thermometers and all other medical products that are required for covid management and futuristically speaking other parts of healthcare okay part two of this consortium is something which is extremely important now india does not make sensors that are used in ventilators we don't have pressure sensors oxygen sensors flow sensors and so on mm -hmm. don't have sufficient supply of oligo concentrates for reagents and kits mm -hmm. we have another uh, 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 effort that is going on within amtz and dbt command consortium which is building of well uh, supply chain behind these products so now okay. we have printed circuit board assembly sensor making and so on going on which helps manufacturers manufacture what we need from them okay and the third component of the consortium is why amtz simply because in medical production if you need to produce a medical device you need a large number of high investment scientific facilities which india didn't have today amtz is the only campus in the country where we have validation and testing industrial infrastructure for all categories of medical devices mm -hmm. which allows manufacturer after having manufactured a kit or a ventilator not to look up to germany or singapore for example for testing and validation okay now if you put these three things together the manufacturing infrastructure for capability enhancement the supply chain of components and key ingredients of products and validation infrastructure that makes us leapfrog into scale up manufacturing for india under a very unique model of pp and and that's 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 quite a comprehensive way of looking at it uh, thank you so much to, uh, uh, dr jitendra for bringing this uh, you know detailed analysis of how not only the amtz uh, uh, dpt consortium works but this also brings in uh, Uh, notice how this entire system helps us building up the capacity and capability but you mentioned about the post covid scenario and uh, dr saslim you also suggested the same let me go back to dr alka sharma here in a post covid scenario dr alka sharma this is a wonderful start and the way we are working about uh, on on biomedical resources obviously is the need of the r but that need does not stop with covid pandemic that need will continue uh, and and we will have to continue working on this so what's the structure or the model from here onwards in terms of policy or in terms of carrying on what we are doing for a post covid scenario as well because it's not only about covid there are other diseases there are other problems as well which we will have to deal with in a post covid scenario Uh, you rightly said that it is very important to keep the momentum in post covid scenario also so uh, there is a need to sustain the innovation ecosystem which has been created for the past several years in public private partnership so sustainability is the key and also the new uh, the initiatives which we are taking from the government of india make in india startup india and brick and so on so these uh, initiatives have to be now uh, operationalized optimally in public private partnership mode and this is starts from raw material reagents um, uh, process improvement preclinical testing clinical studies and uh, so on so this is very important to uh, uh, optimize all the skills which we have uh, uh, for product development which is should be innovative in this industry just to Yeah, right. So through this, as I also mentioned earlier, that this will empower the Make India Make in India initiative uh, to leading to Atmanirbhar Bharat. 
Thank you. Okay. Okay. Definitely. That is uh, something again, the theme there, but the focus has to be a long term perspective as well. Dr. Taslim, your views on that long term perspective, because ultimately what we build today, uh, we should be able to go ahead and reap the benefits in the long term as well. It cannot be a short term or a short sighted, uh, you know, policy or structure anywhere. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, if I give you a very interesting dialogue that I had at home, I'm a neuroscientist by training. I, I study neurodegeneration. And I was talking to my son, Rishad, and I wanted to say, you know, it's very important that different parts of the brain have to talk to each other. Like how neurons talk to each other, why they are not connected. The ecosystem is also connect without necessarily having a direct entity level connection. And that's very crucial. But something manages that. There is a larger central nervous system that manages. And if you take this analogy and talk about consortium, that's the part that the consortium lead and the constitution body takes. If I may take the CNS of this should come from the government, but then it allows different organelles of the brain to talk to each other and then take it from there. And this has to be a long right now, as I think Dr. Jitendra Sharma very well mentioned, the ecosystem is responding very well. But we have to take this crisis mm -hmm. response to something that should be a non risk. We should not wake up during the crisis. We should wait up for the long term, for the growth aspects, and take it from there. And that's where our top notch, uh, the policy making body, I think, is working heavily to say how this well oiled machinery in the last two months should be the norm, not the exception going forward. And NBRIC is actually a right direction in that. And CCAM is delighted to partner on, with DBT on that under the leadership of Dr. Swaroop to actually see how we can work with industry going forward and build biomedical resources. Right now, it could be for COVID, but we at this time, we are aimed to work on different aspects of it. So this is a okay. fantastic platform. We hope that it works that way. Okay, definitely. Thank you so much. Uh, so it looks like, you know, uh, the ecosystem is in place, but as you rightly pointed out, uh, it should be uh, norm, not an exception. Uh, concluding comments from you, uh, Dr. Jitendra, on this long-term aspect before we end this uh, uh, session and this uh, episode here. Uh, so, see, whatever we have done for towards COVID management would hold in good stead for any infectious disease mm -hmm. because the infrastructure we have built would support India in its fight of any infectious disease going forward. But I think as we come out of that COVID pandemic, we will realize that our non-communicable diseases structure is heavy because it was already a low resource oriented approach. And, and cancers are increasing. Hypertension and diabetes is, bec is becoming a killer. We still lose more people by cancers, uh, uh, diabetes, complications, and cardiac diseases than we would lose ever in COVID. Yes, in COVID, what happens is it is infectious. So it uh, infects everyone around and it comes as a surge. But the baseline rate of mortality of non-communicable disease would remain a challenge. And I think what Dr. Taslim said, uh, what Dr. Alka Sharma said, uh, is the same focus, the same effort, the same mission mode approach that various arms of government, industry, and research bodies have taken towards COVID Post-COVID, if we can continue this acceleration towards non-communicable disease, I think India would shine out as an example for management of multiple diseases, some that are challenges, challenges that are temporarily forgotten in the event of something like COVID, and give a resolute solution uh, uh, for management of cancers and non-communicable diseases, apart from infectious diseases, to the world, and the production capacities in India to, should serve as a channel of low-cost, affordable medical product supply globally. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, they are perfectly uh, summed up by Dr. Jitendra. Thank you so much for your views, uh, Dr. Taslim and Dr. Alka Sharma, as well as our panelists pointed out. Clearly, it is uh, a wonderful example of how the industry, the government, and the research bodies can work together to find solutions to all kinds of problems. But uh, this should not be an exception. It should become a norm from here onwards. Let's look at the long-term perspective as well and also ensure that the capacities or the capabilities which are being built up right now 
also continue to serve us in long term. We'll come back again tomorrow with a different topic. Till then, you keep watching Rajya Sabha Television and please do not forget to follow all the norms with respect to social distancing and do not step out of your house without a face mask because the battle against COVID-19 is still on. Thank you.